Hi there. Okay, week two. Let me see if I can get through this before my voice is gone completely. Um, one thing I wanted you to know about videos before I get started on this is I'm going to upload all these video lectures into Perusal, uh, and I wanted to show you where that is. So here's here's my here's Perusal. If you go on the top, you'll come in on assignments, but you you have a library tab. Okay, so if you go to the library tab, you'll see this folder that says video lectures. Now there's nothing in it right now because it's not been in there. <clears throat> this is the first one I've done. But if you click on that and, and open the video <clears throat> and start to play it, uh, as it plays, you'll see up in the top the top corner, right up here, it'll say comment. So if you have a question, you can just click on comment and the video will stop playing. You can leave your question and then you can either keep playing or just you know, leave. And I will answer that as soon as I get notification that you've left something. Okay, so I just think it's um, it's a nice thing to have, and, and that way you can kind of stop and kind of go back and forth. It's not going to make a lot of difference probably this week because this week's pretty straightforward, but in, in upcoming weeks, um, I may have to do a couple of videos <clears throat> for the week because nobody wants to listen to somebody lecture for an hour and a half. But I know I don't, so, um, so that's how I'm going to do that. Okay, that's just to let you know. Here's the weekly schedule. Let me talk you through the assignment and then I'll kind of go back to it. Um, what we're doing now first is to write a 500 word article summary. So you're going to find a scientific or technical article in a peer reviewed journal uh, that's about something you're interested in that's in your field. And then you're going to write a 500 word summary of it. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Why do we do that in a technical writing class? Well, because it's about as the things that you were reading talked about. How do you take complicated information and make it clear to people who are not technical? This is not quite that. <clears throat> Your boss may want you to write a summary of some research that's been done. They're not going to sit still and, and read a five-page summary of an article that's maybe only seven pages long. All they want, they want an executive summary, they want the abstract, they want a 500-word summary. They want to know what's in it and they want to know fast and very clearly, and you have to judge who your who your boss is or who you're writing this for to decide how much technical jargon to put in it. So here, you're just going to say maybe it's somebody in your field who knows kind of what's going on, but you're going to explain this article to them in a way that's clear and that even I can understand, or more or less understand. Okay, so um, as Mark Twain said, a lot of people have laid claim to this quote, but um, it's... I didn't have the time to write it short. Uh, it's really easy to write something that goes on and on and on. It just takes some time to craft something short. So that's what the practice is, of this is going to be. <clears throat> so we're going to go through several steps in this. Um, the first thing you're going to do is to go to Perusal and come back to Perusal. There's an art, there's, whoops, back to assignments. There's this little piece. It's only about three pages long about how to write a summary. Uh, and it's just got some you know, just got some ideas, which I'm going to repeat at the bottom of this, at the end of this lecture, but um, this is how to write a really good summary. Okay, so uh, read and annotate it, you know, leave notes, leave notes for yourself, uh, ask questions, whatever you want to do with it. So that's the first thing you're going to do, and that's due on, what is Tuesday, I guess, Monday or Tuesday, <clears throat> Tuesday, Monday, I don't remember. Um, okay, so you do that first. And then you're going to write a brief annotated bibliographic entry for three potential articles. In other words, you're, you're going to go out to the library and find three articles that you might want to summarize. And you're going to write a little annotation for each one of them. Now, annotations are really, really very useful um, because researchers, if you've got like 9,000 pages of research, you've got a big, big old stack of articles and stuff sitting on your desk, you don't want to keep digging through there. Or even if you start bookmarking stuff on, you know, on your browser, it's kind of hard to, to keep rattling through there. Remember now, which one is that? Which one is that? A short little bibliographic, an annotated uh, bibliographic entry will say what the article is, what it's about, and whether you thought it was useful or not. And that's really all there is to it. So you're going to be writing three of those for three different articles. Um, the handout one I have down here below right there. I've actually got it uploaded. I'm going to show it to you. This is how to write an annotated bibliographic entry. All right. It'll tell you everything you need to know 
uh, here's the citation. We're using APA, uh, which you can get um, how to do that on the Purdue OWL. Uh, you can also, if, you, if you're using our library um, at City Tech, they've got a, a citation generator too, so you can do it there. It'll give you all the information you need, so that's the first part. The annotation's got several aspects to it. <clears throat> The first is just a sentence about whether the author is, you know, if they're professional, if you, or if they're just, you know, an amateur that's making stuff up. And these things are going to mostly be peer reviewed, so these will be authorities in the field. So it's not that big a deal for this, but still might be useful. A sentence or two about what the article is about. Again, that's just to remind you so you can look at the entry and say, oh, yeah, I remember this. That's it. And then another paragraph, um, and actually, this, for this one, it can almost go in this paragraph um, in one paragraph is how credible the source is you know um, is it up to date you know if you're writing something about cryptocurrency and the article was from 2010 you're going to know it's, it's garbage right so you know say if it's current if it has relevance to what you're interested in you know who's the authority who, who wrote who did the publication um, can you tell if the information is basically accurate have you heard about this stuff from someplace else or are they making it up as they go? Um, <clears throat> can you tell if there's emotion or bias in the writing? And and then the last little part of it is how is this, we don't have to be doing this about relevance to your topic, but uh, your version of this would be if you think it might be something you would want to write a full-on summary about. So here's an example of one. You can see they're really short. So here's the bibliographic stuff. Here's the description about what who the author is and what's what the main idea of it is. And this is a little evaluation about how current and relevant uh, it is. <clears throat> so you would put a sentence on the bottom saying, I, I, no, I, I think I'm going to pass on this one. There's too much information. I don't think I'm going to write a really short summary that will do it justice. And there you go. Okay. So this, you can use this as kind of a model template for what you're going to do knowing that you're going to add that little bit on the end about whether you want to write a summary about it or not. Okay? So that's handout one, um, explaining how to write a brief annotated bibliographic entry. First one is due, I think I have it up here for Tuesday. Um, I may have meant Monday, i got to go back and check. But anyway, it's due Monday or Tuesday of next week. And what I want you to do, or I want you to put this, is to go up to our Google Drive. <clears throat> okay. And you'll see the folder says 500 word summary. Now, I created a folder with my name on it to put the annotations in because it's the same place you're going to put the draft of the, of the summary once you get it written, the 500 word summary. So it's a kind of a good idea to create your own folder with your name on it so that you can then upload, you know, annotations, annotation number one, annotation two and three, draft of the article, right? So it's just will make it easier for you to find stuff and for me to find stuff if you kind of create your own um, your own folder within the larger one within the drive. But it's all right there, right there, Google Drive, okay? <clears throat> so the first one is due, like I said, next week, early next week, and then the second and the third one are due at the end of the week on Thursday before our, our end of the week, which is, you know, midnight Thursday night. Um, next week, you'll be writing a draft of it so you'd be looking at, I've got a template for it, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and it won't be due until next week. So this week you're going to look at some articles, decide which one you want to summarize by doing these little annotated bibliographic entries and putting them on the drive. And then next week you're going to pick one of them and do the, do the full-on summary. Now, these summaries sh should look more or less like this. Um, the first paragraph sort of introduces the article and gives a summary of the main idea. A second paragraph lays out the supporting ideas that are in the summary. Right? And then the APA citation is at the bottom. Um, this is not your opinion. You do not give your opinion on this. Right? This is just what's there. It's subjective. Just say what you found and let it go at that. Okay. And again, this this one, this handout too, is also is a template for it that Professor Ellis here at City Tech did. And it looks like this. <clears throat> okay, again, you can see how short it is. Uh, it's set it up like a memo to me from you, date, whenever you turn it in. Subject, you know, it's about whatever the subject is of the article that you're, you're summarizing. 
in the first part of it, you know, introduces us, says what the main idea of the article is. The second paragraph is the supporting information about it, the main points that support the main idea. And then here's the APA reference at the bottom. Again, very short, uh, not due until next week. Um, okay. So that's that's essentially what's gonna what you're gonna be doing, um, looking at three articles, doing a bibliographic, uh, an annotated bibliographic entry for three, and deciding which one you're gonna write a 500 word summary on. That's all that's going on for these two weeks. Now all this is how to find and work with articles. Um, <clears throat> most of this stuff is in that that uh, that handout that's up on perusal. Um, this explains how to do a reverse outline. I don't know if this link is live or not. Yeah, there you go. Um, a reverse outline, if you've never done a reverse outline, it's kind of cool because uh, it helps you just kind of see what's in the paper. Um, and if you, you can actually do them on your own work, and it's really, really helpful. I would never have gotten through my, my master's thesis without having done a reverse outline on it because I got lost, I got confused, and I went through and made one of these things. And I could see on one sheet of paper what my main ideas were and what order they were in. And I could very quickly see where I'd gone wrong and I could go back and fix it. So reverse outlines are a really, really useful tool. Um, so anyway, so this is this is from the handout that's there uh, that's on perusal. It'll give you a little bit more information about it. Now, how do you find research stuff? Well, go to the library. <clears throat> There's a library link. Let's see if it's working. I was having trouble with the library before. Ah, now I can lecture you for days about how to do research, but that's boring. The best thing to do is just go to Research Help on the City Tech Library because they've got these great tutorials, right? How to do these things. All these tutorials. There's a whole course on it. Here's a library orientation. Right, so you go to the tutorials, research strategies, academic sources, how to choose a database. So go through here, you know, and um, just, they're very short. They're, they're little animated things, right? They're on their YouTubes and they're none of them very long. Um, <clears throat> but they will tell you exactly what to do to go uh, get to the information that you're looking for and help you find decent sources. So this, the library has got lots of really good stuff um, if you really don't know what you're doing. <clears throat> um, this is about how to do citations. Uh, if you kind of know what you're doing already, you can go find books, articles, right? Uh, journals. If you know there's a particular journal you want to look for, you can click over to the journals and okay, say you're doing earth and environmental sciences, which you're probably not, but you know, ta -da, ta -da, it'll give you give you links to all of these journals, right? So. That's one thing you can do um, if you want to look for, um, just look for articles on something. Um, again, you can look through science and technology, click on them. These will take you to the databases so you can kind of start looking up things. Um, we were doing this one. Okay, these are, these are databases. So you look through the database and ah, they'll t even tell you which ones are popular. And the cool thing is um, there are also videos in here, but, but the department wants you to, to do print stuff. Okay, so that said, <clears throat> uh, you, hit the, you, you know, use the library and the library is incredibly, incredibly useful and got tons of stuff on it. So go to the library, do the research help, and start finding some articles. And that, that's really all there is to it. The, the other nice thing about the library stuff is you can download or send yourself PDFs of the articles. So you don't have to always keep working online on those two things. Now, to get into the library, you're going to need your, your info ID, your student ID, um, if you've never logged on before. But it'll also tell you how to, how to get there. But if you use this link, <clears throat> you should be able to, to get on. Okay? I think that's, I think that's all I wanted to, uh, to say. Um, it's just, this is what we're doing. I'm going to put this on perusal and ask me questions. Again, as always, email me, text me on Slack, um, and get started on these things. And let me know if you're starting to run into problems. Um, 
Good luck with it. I'll see you on the other side. Bye.